Hey everybody, Real With Wes, day four here. Now I'm coming at you, you're like, you're gonna see this video today, a little late, and day five. Long story short, uh, I'm on my new phone right now. I had to get it replaced. So it took a little while to um, get it replaced and get shipped out, 24 hours. So everything was a little messed up yesterday in between today, but here I am, I wanted to come back to you. So this is gonna be day four, and then uh, I wanna do a video right afterwards. That'll be day five here. Make sure you guys, I get you uh, through this kind of thing because I really want you to hear this week uh, start to finish. We're talking about doing the work though. So we're talking about rightly dividing the word of God. And it's this pursuit of getting to know God better. So when you talk about rightly dividing the word, John 1 said the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So it's really rightly dividing God in person when you say the word. It's rightly dividing him. It's rightly dividing him in the image of Jesus. Showing you all the connections, because it's like, how do I really divide the word? We've been going through piece by piece. Well, today I'm going to talk about how the Spirit of God really plays the main, a major role into rightly and correctly dividing the word of God. Paul's talking in the Corinth church here in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. I'm going to start in verse 9 and read down into it. It says, this, that is what the scriptures mean when they say, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. Now, when I get into this, well, let me just keep reading it, and I'll come back and remember that, what I just said, because people go, no I, and uh, we haven't seen, how can we ever know? But verse 10 says, but, but, in verse of light 9, but now that we're in this dispensation of grace, now that we have the Holy Spirit dwelling in our hearts, it says, but it was us, it was to us that God revealed these things by his Spirit, for his spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deep secret. Verse 11, no one can know a person's thoughts or mind or thinking except that person's own spirit. And no one can know God's thoughts except God's own spirit. And we, verse 12, and we have received God's spirit not the world spirit, so we can now know the wonderful things God has freely given us by this grace, by the way. So what we start, we, he quotes a scripture, of course, you know, the word of God says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. Oh, and you can take that and be like, well, I just am never going to know. But Paul is saying that's not where it ends. That's the way it used to be. But now, in light of what Jesus has done, in light of the day of Pentecost, in light of the Spirit of God coming to dwell in us, he is the revealer to us is what he is. And he is revealing the thoughts and hearts and the will and the plan of God to us right now is what he's doing. So how do we get to know this word? It's the spirit of God, God's thinking, God's view, God's perspective, revealing the word. And so just reading the word alone out of your natural understanding without acknowledging the spirit of God in you, revealing God's perspective, revealing God's nature, revealing God's understanding, revelation, this word will never take real power in your life. And it will be extremely difficult to divide it correctly or get the fullness out of it and the enrichment out of it. But we have God's spirit now in us, speaking to us, writing things on our heart, revealing things to us. We just have to acknowledge what's going on on the inside of us. You know, I say this all the time. There's nowhere in the word it says, Wes, Wes, go work at this job. Wes, marry this person. Wes, do this. It's not in the word. What do I do, though? Well, I read the word and then I let the Spirit of God speak from that to direct me in those things that the word does not clearly address. I gave this example all the time with Job, understanding this part. How do you do this? Well, you understand Job. We, we talked about this uh, day three. Um, you know, Lord, Lord gives and the Lord takes away. And his friends thought he did this horrible sin to get God, not realizing, you know, really, if you read all the way through it, the enemy was behind it. And we live in a broken world is what the main thing reason was behind it. And God corrected him and said, you spoke ill of my servant. And also at the same time, it was like go, Job was speaking from a place like so many of us, agony and pain and, and circumstance, thinking God had, was against him when God was actually for him. And God even restored everything back to him double because of his goodness. But how, does we, how, how do we see that? How do we read that? Well, the Spirit of God revealing that writing the, the nature of God on the inside of us, which is love, which we talked about in day three. Um, all those things allow you to see what I just said from the word and read the word of God correctly. It's all by spirit. Um, and, and that's all I got. So tomorrow, uh, or day five when I say tomorrow, 
day five, technically, um, I'm going to talk about this last part about the nature of God and reading and rightly dividing the word. But leaving you with this, look for the Holy Spirit to reveal the word of God to you, to rightly divide it. Without him, without his leading, without his speaking, it's impossible to know really the thoughts of God truly other than just trying to read this word. And that's where we get messed up. But when the spirit of God is rightly dividing, writing the nature of God on our hearts, writing how God and who he is on our hearts and revealing it through this scripture and showing the contrast in the scripture. Watch out. You're going to see this whole word in a whole different way. And your faith is just going to flow on a whole different level. So catch uh, all this week, catch day five, um, which I'm about to post in a few minutes. Catch today, catch day five. And man, your life is going to be transformed about rightly dividing this word and experiencing God's best. All right. Catch you on day five.